Hi everybody, it's March in the greenhouse. We've got a lot of things growing. We've got lemons, oranges, passion fruit, and a ton of other things that are coming up now that the days are getting longer. So I'll take you on a little tour. So come along with me. It is March in the greenhouse and we've got a lot of things started. The days are getting longer, um, so we're starting a lot of seeds and a lot of plants that we have in here have started to take off. So I'll take you guys on a little tour. So this is one of our citrus trees. This is a Meyer lemon and um, it's doing really good. I just repotted it today. We've got some, uh, it bloomed and we've got some little, little lemons coming along here. You can like barely see them. And then down here, we've got some potatoes. Dean started those in pots a, a month or two ago, and we already have some little potatoes coming along, which kind of surprised me because I thought with the days being so short, we wouldn't have much for uh, tuber growth. But, so that was a nice surprise. It was just a little experiment. We've also got some ginger down here, and it's been growing really well in a pot. This is a variegated type and it is edible. It grows well in pots. I've done it in our raised beds and it didn't do as well in those for whatever reason. So pots is the way to go for us. Um, this is another citrus. I believe this might be a navel orange, but I could be wrong. I think one of my kids must have ripped the label off. But it's doing really well as well. You can see there's little oranges on here too and smaller ones coming along. We've also got lots of figs. The figs really like growing in here. I think they like the high humidity. Um, so we've grown a lot more of those. They're coming along nicely as well. We've got several different varieties. This is a Chicago. I think this one's a Chicago too. We've also got Mission Figs. And let's see this one. Ron de Bordeaux. I might have said that wrong. I'm really excited about these. We've had figs off of our big plant a couple times and they are delicious. Yeah, figs really love it in the greenhouse for some reason, hey? This is a Seville orange and it's doing really well in here also. It hasn't bloomed though, so maybe I need to move it into some more light. This is a banana pup that Dean cut off the, the main plant and we've had lots of these and they get huge really fast. We're going to have to find a spot for this one. So we've got more figs. This is just a jasmine plant I bought from the grocery store. I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with that. I have to look it up. This is a Valencia orange. We've only got a couple big ones, but it's already bloomed and it's setting fruit um, in other areas. So. That's exciting. We've got mint in pots, citronella, more bananas. This is an elderberry cutting. Elderberry is borderline hardy. Like I would say probably not hardy for Saskatchewan. So I got some cuttings sent to me and I'm just gonna start them in pots. This is a guava. It had a lot of dieback this winter. I don't know if that was too, due to low light levels or what, but it's coming back around. It's a bit finicky though. And then we've got more banana. This is a hibiscus. I found this just on um, Kijiji. It was a cutting that an um, elderly lady sold to me and it's doing really well. I love having hibiscus in here in the winter time. And then over here, this is our little herb area, little herb patch. We haven't had to buy any herbs from the grocery store, spices for that matter, so that's really nice. We've got parsley, and that just reseeds itself everywhere. I've been having to pull it out. So parsley, it's a little bit dirty. Sage, oregano, that's not supposed to be there. We've got a few types of mint. And then some lavender. 
chives down here. And then a nice little rosemary patch. The other thing is this, there's a couple eucalyptus plants in here. I started these from seed. I think it must have been last year or the year before. And I figured I'd keep a few in here, overwinter them in the greenhouse, and I didn't realize they were gonna get this huge. So that's nice, but they're not gonna be able to stay here. I'm gonna have to take them out or cut them down. Um, but it's pretty cool how big they grew. So then over here, this is just stock that I transplanted just yesterday. And so that'll grow and it'll produce really nice smelling flowers. I'm trying to get as many pollinators in here as I can for this spring and summer. This is a lemon eucalyptus. And this is another one I'm gonna have to move somewhere else, which is fine. I'll, I have a few other plants I started in pots that I can replace this one with, but it smells really good. Uh, then we also have grapes. This is just a little grape that we transplanted last year, I believe it was. And it seems to be doing well this spring, so we're going to have to figure out a trellising system for it. I'm on it. <laughs> and then we've got some strawberries. These are supposed to be a day-neutral variety, but they do not produce year-round for us. So I don't know what that's about. So I'm going to have to do some research into that. Lettuce. Our lettuce, some of it has gone to seed. It gets to be 30, over 30 degrees in our greenhouse. So keeping the lettuce from bolting is a little bit of a challenge. Dean and I are always arguing about opening the, the doors and windows up for ventilation. He wants to retain all the heat and I want things to cool down a little bit. So There's some borage in here. That'll be good for the pollinators as well. Basil. We've got beets. I just seeded some carrots in here the other day. And they're just barely starting to come up. If you look really closely, if you can see them. These are leeks from last year that I didn't do anything with. I should have. And then there's some onions that are sprouting up in here. There's also fennel from last year that's coming back. And then we've also got artichokes. These are, I started these plants last year and they did produce artichokes last year, but um, yeah, it's only March and they're already producing these. So that's really good. And then over here, I've just got a few types of scented geranium. This is a coconut scented variety and it smells really good. And this is an orange fizz one. If you, if you remember those orange fizz candies from like the nineties, I don't know if they're still around. It smells exactly like that. And then I've got some tomatolos in here. There's mushrooms. We have edible mushrooms that grow in here as well. Just your common field mushrooms. So that was a nice surprise. They must like the humidity. And then, yeah, lettuce, just a bunch of lettuce. We've also got nettle coming up, which I am going to pick and make into tea. Don't garbage your nettle, it makes the most nutritious tea. And then down here, we've got tobacco. And that has really nice flowers as well. And I've got another little pack, patch of mint. I've also got some sweet peas that reseeded themselves and I'm just going to leave them. I was going to pull these plants, but I'll leave them because the flowers smell so nice. This is our main fig. This is one of the first plants we got for the greenhouse and we've gotten figs off of it a couple times. Those are just tiny right now, but if you look in here, there's some bigger ones 
and the figs on these are delicious. I believe it is a mission fig. That was what I was told. We've got a grapefruit plant over here. It had pretty much died last year, but it's made a comeback, so we'll leave it be. And then this is our spinach patch. This is really surprising for me because with it getting over 30 degrees in here, I would have thought that this would have bolted by now, but it's been going strong since November, so that's really neat. It's partly shaded at times, so that might be part of the reason it doesn't bolt. And then this is a dwarf Cavendish banana. And it's only gonna get a little bit bigger than this. I'm, I'm hoping, because they say it was a dwarf variety. Um, and we've yet to get bananas off of it, but I'm hopeful. And then this big banana here is, the variety is called ice cream. And this must be like 16 feet high by now. And yeah, we're waiting on bananas for this one too. So hopefully this year. Down here we have, uh, this is my artichoke patch. I love artichokes, so we've got a nice big patch of those fully. And then in here, I've got another little hibiscus. There's things in here I don't even remember planting. I don't remember planting this hibiscus, but <laughs> we'll take it. There's a little bay leaf plant back here. It's got some powdery mildew on it, but that's okay. And then this is patchouli. This is quite a finicky plant in here, but it is growing. It smells wonderful. Back here we have lemongrass. And then this is more mint. I have a feeling I really should have kept these in pots because they're gonna be taken over. And then in here is celery. The celery we planted last year and it's still going. We've just been harvesting off of it all, all last summer, fall, winter, and it's, it's still going. So that's a really good thing to grow if you have a greenhouse like this. <laughs> and then down here, this is just a bronze fennel. I mostly like this for the foliage. It's good in cut flower arrangements, so. But it's edible as well. And then down here, this is a little experiment I did last fall. I planted these lysianthus just to, just to see what they would do. And they appear to be coming back and looking like decently healthy. So I think I'll get some blooms off of them. But it was just a little experiment. And then over here is some radicchio. This is my first time growing it. It's pretty slow going. I seeded some patty pan squash in here not even a week ago and it's already coming up. It came up within three or four days which was surprising. And then these are volunteer tomatoes that um, I've just been staking to the, the trellis. Dina's stepping on my plants. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I seeded beets in here today. We're all out of our beets. I love eating beets. We've got another eucalyptus here. This is just your standard eucalyptus globulus. It's the medicinal variety that you make medicine out of. And then we've got a little dill patch in here. You can never have enough dill. Oh, over in here, this is my bougainvillea. I don't know if you can... I still gotta get out of here. Okay. This is my bougainvillea. Since the days have gotten longer, this thing must grow a few inches a day. So that's really nice. This is one of my favorite things that we grow in here. I'd like to get a couple more. And so, what else? Down here, I seeded just a patch of calendula in here. I noticed the pollinators really liked it when I had it in here last year. And then back here, this is a patch of volunteer tomatoes. Um, tomatoes are like a weed in here. They just, they come up everywhere. 
Um, so I'm probably going to end up pulling them or transplanting them and moving them to a different area. We've got lots of chard that's been growing for months now. It doesn't stop. <laughs> oh, and then this is my little baby olive plant. This was actually hidden behind, I can't remember what I had planted in here this fall, and I completely forgot I had it, but it's hanging on for dear life. Over here, this is a patch of snapdragons. I wanted a nice big patch for cut flowers, and also it's great for pollinators. So. This is another big eucalyptus, eucalyptus globulus. I guess we'll go back either way. What is this guy here? That is digitalis, that's foxglove. Is it food? No, and it's poisonous. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> what else did I see? Oh, zucchini. I did a row of zucchini in here. It's not coming up to us. And then I'll show you some of the things we have started. This is our passion fruit. It was looking not so hot a um, month or two ago, but it looks like the new growth is doing better. So I don't really know what that was about, but it's doing better. We've been eating a few passion fruit off of here. I think there's still a couple. This one doesn't look so good, but it'll be fine. There's a few more down here somewhere. And then, yeah, so I've got little tomatoes going here. Perennials that I started from seed. Peppers. This is scabiosa. It's a really nice perennial for our zone. Down here we have onions. And I need to give those all a little bit of a haircut. That's okay. And then peppers. And in here we have celery. This is just your standard Utah. And then I've got this pink. Chinese pink celery that I'm really excited about because it's something I hadn't grown before. This is little basil plants that I just transplanted yesterday. And then two fake plants. This is an interesting little herb. It's a handy thing to have around for when there is no dentist. Leeks. I started some echinacea from seed. I had great germination on that. More foxgloves and then some microgreens that are overgrown. I'm gonna have to start some more. Cool. And then I'll show you the other well, What do you got here with your soil blocker you, you're liking? Oh yeah, I've been enjoying soil blocking. It's really handy for the things that, um, seeds that are really small or things that don't germinate well. I've had really good luck with it. I don't use it for everything, <clears throat> but it helps the plants develop a better root system and it can be better for the environment in a lot of different ways. What else did I start? I started some dahlias from seed and then licorice. I like that for its medicinal purposes, marjoram, and then some more broccoli and basil. I had to start my cucumbers in pots because I noticed I had started some seed several weeks ago right into the ground and it almost looks like something ate it. So did you post that video yet about the frog? No. So we have a frog, we found a frog in here uh, the other day, which is really funny because I don't know how how it got in here. I don't know if they would eat that with it. I think they were eating my artichokes over there. Oh, these fuckers. Is this that uh, soil blocker machine, your little one? Yeah, this is my little mini blocker. It's really dirty, so I... Handy little thing. Cool. <clears throat> and then over here, I'll just show you some of the things that I've started. This is yarrow. It makes a good cut flower and it's good for several different medicinal uses as well. This is little Lysianthus that I just, oops, transplanted yesterday. These are little baby eucalyptus in here. Snapdragons that I should have 
um, bumped up like a month ago. But the time it gets away on us with little kids. Celosia and then peppers. So this year in our greenhouse, for the spring and summer, we're going to be keeping our peppers and tomatoes in here because they like the heat. And so yeah, I'm starting lots of those. And we're also going to have a plant sale in late May or early June. So if you're local to our area and you're watching, um, just keep your eyes peeled for that. Down here we've got more Lysianthus. I've started over a thousand of those. And Verbascum which is nice cut flowers and also medicinal uses. More foxglove. I've started a whole bunch of flowers down here too. More peppers over here. Peppers, you said? Yeah, these are peppers. Down here is more Lysianthus, soil block. Let's see if I can get this over here. This is lemon balm in here and this is a really good starter herb to grow. If you want to get growing your own medicine, this is a good starter plant. It's really easy. And then I got some specialty delphinium seeds. That's the wrong side of the table. Um, that I started and I'm really excited about those. I love delphinium. And that's about Bye. <laughs> so that's it for the tour. Um, I'm curious what everybody else is starting for seeds, especially if you live in a tropical area. Tell me what to grow in here. And um, yeah, it's starting to be a really busy, busy season in here. And yeah, we're gonna be really busy for the next couple of months. Pretty much till winter, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for watching.